I started this message last week, and for those that were not physically here, uh, you, you're going to catch part two, but you had to be here for part one to understand where I'm coming from. Amen. Somebody say amen, Colossians. Amen. amen, Colossians chapter two on the other side of Ephesians, amen? Yes. You can find it, amen? If you can't find it by looking through the Bible, look in the table of contents. Yes. Amen? amen? And last week I brought my sign and I brought my sign back. And I wore a different robe, so you know it ain't the same sermon, but it's a continuation. Amen. And every Christian should wear a sign. Amen. Every Christian should wear a sign. Amen. Amen. Many who won't hear don't understand where I'm coming from, but this is part two. Amen. Amen. Part two. Amen. Amen. Asking you, did you know you're God's private property? Amen. Look at somebody and say, did you know? Your God's private property. Amen? Amen. And if you're God's private property, there are certain things you cannot be involved in. Amen. There are certain things you cannot be doing. Amen. Somebody say amen now. Amen. One of them, no soliciting. Yes. And the devil should never come to you trying to get you the lottery. Amen. There should also be no trespassing. Amen. Come on, somebody. You, you and I are private property. And here at the bottom it says, all offenders, that mean the devil crowd, will be persecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Somebody say amen. amen. In other words, when the devil messes with you, you say, you need to leave me alone. Amen. Why do I need to leave you alone, he might have, because I'm God's property. Amen. You heard a prime property. Come on, somebody. But we're God's property. Amen. And when something belongs to God, the devil ain't got no business messing with it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I mean, what kind of preacher is that that wear a sign on Sunday morning? They're the last one of us that have a sign, amen? A sign that when folks come to know who we are. Come on, somebody. They know right away what you stand for. Somebody say amen. But the sign should not be on the outside. The sign should be on the inside. You should wear the word of God in your heart and not on your sleeve. You can wear a cross all you want. Come on, somebody. There's a whole lot of folks that are in the thing that are wearing a cross, but the cross should be in their heart. My, my, my. I'm just giving you a little time. You know the word to say no soliciting uh, simply means, uh, uh, you know, to seek, obtain by persuasion, intrigue or formal application, to entice or incite, to evil, to do evil, an uh, illegal action. To approach with an uh, offer of sexual service or uh, someone's desire. That's what soliciting means. Don't let the devil solicit you. I don't care how smooth uh, he talks. I don't care how beautiful her skin may be. Don't let the devil use somebody to use you. When you trespass, you cross over into somebody else's zone. Mine is somebody else's business. You and I got to be careful in the hour in which we live. In Colossians, we find out that, that Paul wrote the church of Colossians in chapter 2. We're going to be starting at verse 1. He wrote the church of Ephesus because Ephesus was preoccupied with being the Christ of the church. But Colossians was preoccupied with being the church of Christ. Oh, Ephesus was one who was concerned about the body. But Paul wrote the church of Colossians because he was concerned about the head. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. We're living in dangerous times, and you and I on Calvary Cross yeah. was bought with a price. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, a ransom, a ransom. was paid for my soul. Paid. I've been bought, been bought. With, a with a price, and the price, and the price. has been paid in full. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, you blessed and don't even know it. You see, you are a private property. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Private property. Amen. That devil ain't got no business soliciting you. Amen. So you can say to him, no, 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 no. 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 Sometimes you got to tell the devil, all right, no. When, when, when you, you say no to drugs, you got to say yes to Christ. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Whatever you say no to, you got to say yes to something. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't with me this morning. I'm going to have to 
I'm going to have to get on and push you up this morning. Amen. You see, you, you might not know it, but you were paid for a long time ago. Uh, you were bought with a price a long time ago. The blood that was shed on Calvary's cross paid your debt in full. Come on, somebody. All you got to do is serve him. Live for Christ, and he'll do the rest for you. Amen? That's all it takes to live right before the presence of God. Amen? Here in Colossians, we see for Paul said, For I would that you know what great conflict, hallelujah, what great conflict I have for you, for them at Laodicea. God, Laodicea was one of the seven churches of Asia Matter. Yeah. Paul wanted this epistle not only to be preached in Colossians and Ephesus, but take that message up to Laodicea. Yeah. So God said, I know your works, Laodicea, mm -hmm. and I would that you would be hot or cold. Yeah. Because God said, if you're lukewarm, yeah. God said, I'll vomit you and I'll throw you up out of my mouth. God said, I know you was, who thought you was rich and important and famous and was a world trade center and you did great things. But God said, you're poor and you're wretched because you're allowing your wealth to get to you. Come on, somebody. He, they allow their prosperity to ruin their walk in Christ. Some people ain't right until they got money in their pocket. And when they get money in their pocket, they forget all about God, not knowing that they have been solicited by the devil, not knowing that they have trespassed the law of God. You and I are going to be very careful. Whatever you put in front of God can cause you to trespass against God. You see, you and I can trespass against one another. We can say something that ain't got nothing to do with nobody else's business. You know, folks, there are some folks that be in your business. Well, come on now. They're all up in your business. They know what color Kool-Aid you like to drink. They know what kind of pots you got in your kitchen. They come right out of the street and stick their hand in your pot. And they ain't even wash their hand. Well, come on, somebody, talk to me. They can trespass you by saying something to you or doing something to you. They can trespass. Well, you know folks can trespass you even when they know you're going to work. They're trying to hold you up for work. Well, you, you might not want to hear that kind of preaching. But you and I are prime property. We are God's private property. And God don't want us to abuse our time or abuse our talent. He don't want to misuse what he has given us. Somebody say amen. amen. Time is running out and Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. Ready or not, prepared or not, the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah. And if you belong to God, you got to get your house and keep your house in order. Yeah. Most folks that want to get it together sooner or later, I'm saying get it together now. And when you get it together, keep it together. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, you may not know it. But you know it now. You're prime property. You're a private property. He says here now, I dealt with Laodicea. Laodicea need to come back to her first love. Like the Church of Philadelphia. Laodicea need to know, thus saith the Lord, and repent of her deeds. Amen? Because God ain't going along with no lukewarm church. Fleshly and worldly churches where folks then crept in and did all kind of things and then they want to blame it on God. When things don't go right, they won't preach and teach the word of God no more. They want a watered down version. When I said it once, I said it again. I didn't bring no sugar and I didn't bring no honey. And I want to go as far as say, I didn't even bring no peachy juice. Because I ain't sweet nothing today, amen? I want you to hear the word of God just like it is. I want you to know it just for what it is. I want you to make a change in your life. Because when the devil crowd come at you, you got to let them know all offenders will be persecuted to the full extent of the law. Why? Because I am private property. And don't you cross me. They had to learn it the hard way. 
I said it before, every one of these signs should be hanging in the church. Every one of these signs should be hanging up here in the church. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, my God. I want to hide, hang it up so you can see it. Uh, ain't that, don't that look good? Yeah. Come on, I hope that camera get that. Amen. Yeah. No soliciting. Yeah. No loitering. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Because, you see, most folks go to church to loiter. Yeah. They don't go to participate. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. God didn't call you to be a spectator. Yeah. God wants you to participate. Yeah. He wants you to praise the Lord. He wants you to worship him. He wants you to glorify him. He wants you to magnify him. He wants you to lift him up. Some folks come to church and get mad. They don't come to shout and praise the Lord. They got to come with an attitude. Go to sleep with an attitude. Wake up with an attitude. Walk around with an attitude. And then they want to put their attitude on you. But the devil is a liar. I got to say no to him when he tried to get you to lie. Bad spot to be in when you're preaching caught in a lie. My, my, my. Let me, let, let, me, let me get back to the message. Verse 2 says that their hearts might be comfort being knitted together in love unto all riches and the fullness of assurance. The fullness of assurance of understanding. To the acknowledgement of the mysteries of God and of the Father of Christ. Oh, Paul can write up something, can't he? In whom are hid all the treasures. In whom all the treasures are hidden, all the treasures of wisdom. You want to get some treasures? Seek out the wisdom and knowledge of God. God will give it to you. And verse 4 says, For this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing word. Be, be careful of these slick talking preachers. Come on somebody. If you're country, you're country. If you're from the city, you're from the city. But you ain't got to get slick because you came from the country. Come on somebody because they ain't going to call you a city slicker. Come on somebody. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit. That's how come you can say I might not be physically but in the spirit I'm in. Join, rejoice, it says, rejoicing and beholding your order yes, and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Yes, I'm beholding that. Yes. And he said in verse 6, as ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus, the Lord, as so walk ye in him. Yes. If you receive Christ as your Savior, yes. you got to walk in him. Yes. And if you walk in him, you're going to live in him. Yes. And if you're going to live in him, when that devil crowd show up, you got to recognize when they show up. You got to point the sign out to them. No soliciting. No loitering. And whatever you do, don't trespass. Oh, come on, somebody. See, some of y'all are scared to tell the devil don't trespass. Verse 7 says, Root it. Everybody say, Root it. When you're rooted, you know, roots go down. And they grow deep and wide. And the stronger the root grows in the earth, the stronger you will become to be. Yes. And I'm talking about the roots of your heart. Yes. He says, rooted and built up in him. Yes. Established in the faith. Yes. You got to know what you're staying for. Yes. As ye have been taught, abounding therein with all thanksgiving. Yes. He said in verse 8, and just a few more verses here. Beware as any man. Yes. See, some folks been spoiled. Yes. Amen. And don't, 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 don't get mad with me. How many, how many in life have been spoiled? Raise your hand. Now see, some of y'all been spoiled and you ain't got your hand up. You don't even know what it means to be spoiled. Oh my God. I, I, I'm going to preach a, I'm gonna have to preach a sermon on being spoiled. Because some folks don't even understand what it means to be spoiled. Because he says, sometimes when you got things going your way all the time, and then when there's a change you don't like it, you spoil. Oh, come on, somebody. You got a toy and you don't want nobody else to play with it. You got a preacher and you don't want nobody else to hear him. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, see, I know where I'm going with it. You ought to ask somebody every week, I want you to come and hear a word. Amen. 
You ain't got to worry about how it's going to come because not, not one time out of the 34 plus years I've been preaching have I ever reneged on God's word. Because I know what the word is capable of doing. And I know once I preach the word, it's going to find a resting place. It's going to find a hiding place. It's going to find a place that's going to make a change in your life. But you've got to be willing. Look at somebody and say, you've got to be willing to make a change. Oh, I might not see you on Sunday, but you can still make that change. Come on, somebody. For he says here in verse uh, 8, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceitful after the tradition of men. After the rudiment. Everybody said, beware of the rudiment. The rudiment of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. My, my, my. Anything you're looking for, you can find it in Jesus. Anything you're hunting for, you can find it in Jesus. Anything you got a need for, you can find it in Jesus. Anything you desire, you can find it in Christ. If it's love that you're looking for, you can find it in Jesus. If it's joy that you're looking for, you can find it in Jesus. If it's peace that you're looking for, you can find it in Jesus. If it's long suffering you're looking for, you can find it in Jesus. If it's a heaven or life that you're looking for, you can find them in Christ. Look at somebody and say, whatever you're looking for, you can find it in Christ. Well, God got just what you want. Didn't we learn last week that Jesus is the man? Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, you might, those who weren't here last week, I, I want you to know that, you know, you, when you, when you, you, somebody you're dealing with and, and they help you out. Come on, somebody. And you appreciate what they're saying. You're the man. You know what I'm trying to say? When they do something right for you, you say, you the man. And then they say, no, you the man. But I'm here to take it to another level. Jesus is the man. Somebody say amen. Jesus is the man. Amen. Because he will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory that be in Christ Jesus. I don't know how you can sit here and look cute. When the Holy Ghost is everywhere. The Holy Ghost is on the window pane. The Holy Ghost is on the microphone. The Holy Ghost is on the anointed oil. The Holy Ghost is on the sign. The Holy Ghost is on the lights. The Holy Ghost is in the air. Wherever God's presence is, he breathes in the praises of God. Oh, my, my. Oh, my Lord. He says, for in him, verse 9, for in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete. Look, somebody said, Jesus, make me complete. Jesus, make me complete. That sounds like a title to a song. Yes. Jesus, make me complete. Amen? Amen. In him, you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities. Amen? Not only principality, is he in charge of all power and authority. Come on, somebody. In other words, the devil can't do nothing to you. That's why you have the authority to say to him, no soliciting. I'm private property. You have the authority because you're in Christ. No soliciting, no loitering. Come on, somebody. You have the authority to see when he's coming to attack. You can say, and no trespassing. Amen. Because I'm born with a price. And I'm in the body of Christ. And if I'm in the body of Christ, then all power and principality belong to God. Amen. And God love it when he know you know his word. Y'all believe that? Amen. Don't you know that God love it when you can quote his word back to him? And you can stand on his promise because God knows that he got my promise. She got my promise. I can't go back on my word. Amen. God got to stand by his word when nobody else can stand by. 
when others will forsake him, when others will walk out on him, when others will abandon him, when others will rebuke him, when others will not be pleased with him, God got to stand by his word. Isn't that beautiful to know? God got to stand by his word. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, it's important that you and I understand that God is who he say he is. And that God that we serve is everywhere. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You believe that this morning? Amen. God is everywhere. Amen. I used to think he was only down in Jerusalem. Now I found out that the Holy Ghost is everywhere. Amen. And wherever you need, the Holy Ghost is right there. Amen. All you got to do is call on him, Joe. All you got to do is holler out to him, Joe. I know the day is your birthday, but you had to thank him for 15 years. You had to thank him for 15 years on this planet Earth because a lot of young men and women didn't make it. You had to thank God for the Holy Ghost. And don't ever walk away from the reflection of what God has in store for you. My, my, my. You see, the reason why I know that God is everywhere because Ezekiel had to tell the people go up in captivity for 70 years. And that the people didn't want to leave Jerusalem because they thought that God only dwelled down in Jerusalem. But God told Ezekiel to tell them to go up into captivity. Say, so if they go up, I'm going to bless them while they're going up. And while they're there for 70 years, I'm going to bless them while they're there. And God says, I want you to tell them, Ezekiel, that I'm the God that's everywhere. You believe that? You believe that God is everywhere? You believe that God is in the emergency room? You believe that God is in the, uh, all in your kitchen and God is also in the MICU and the SICU and the intensive care unit? You believe that God is uh, not only next door to you, but he's in your house? Because the God we serve is everywhere. I used, to, I used to think like that too, that God was just located in one place. I used to think that, that, that when I used to go out and play basketball, I stopped playing basketball for about six months to a year because I didn't think God was on the basketball court. Oh, y'all ain't with me. You see how naive we can be thinking that God is isolated, that the God we serve can be put up on a shelf, but the God we serve is everywhere. You got to get that idea in your head. Everywhere you go and everything you do, God sees and knows all things because all power and all principality belong to him. It is ordained to him for whatever happens on earth, God knows about it. The Bible said that men have to always pray and not to faint. You know why I have you to talk to each other in church? Because some of y'all don't want to talk to nobody during the rest of the week. Look at somebody and say, God will have me always to pray and not to faint. <clears throat> you see, the Bible said that there was a, there was a, and, and, and I, I, I preach this all the time because sometimes it gets to people and sometimes it don't. There was an unjust judge now, this is the way Christ explained it. Already from the get-go, if a man is called an unjust judge, that tells you from get-go he's already crooked. Am I talking right? In other words, Christ going to detail. Now, keep in mind that Jesus is about 33 years old, about ready to be crucified. He was born and raised in this town. He knew all the, he knew all the people of the town. He knew the crook and the righteous. And everybody knows that this was an unjust judge. You pay him some money, he'll do some undermining stuff. If he was in a partnership with somebody else, he was always up to no good. In fact, Christ went as far as to say that the man did not regard God and had no respect for God and had no respect for man. Now, man is in a lot of trouble just because he got a position and he don't respect God, nor do he respect man. But he was a crooked judge. But the Bible said in the same town, there was a widower. And this widower tried to go to this unjust judge to get him to avenge her adversary. 
In other words, let me just break it down to you so you know what's going on here. This judge had already made a deal with the neighbors over some property and land. And this woman wanted her a uh, part of ownership of this land because her husband died and she had no children. So she went before the gates of the city where they conducted business, and the judge was there that's already crooked, already didn't work the deal, wasn't planning on giving the woman nothing, had no intention, but the woman was persistent. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to say, when you want something of God, you got to be persistent. I'm saying because you are private property, you can ask God what you will. And it shall be granted according to his will. This woman recognized this man got something. He had the authority to give me what belonged to me. But because he was sitting on that authority, he was sitting on that property, he didn't want all kind of deals out with somebody else, and he didn't want them to have it, the Bible says she was persistent at this judge. Now, I'm, I'm going to put you in the frame of mind of this woman. Imagine I'm the judge. I'm sitting in the gates of the city. I look up, and there she is. I go down the street to the market, and there she is. I go to eat lunch, and there she is. I go home, and she's sitting on my front porch. I get up in the night, and she's looking through my window. I think y'all are getting the picture now. In other words, whatever has belonged to me, I'm going to get it, and you got the authority and power, but the power that he had didn't belong to him. It belonged to God. Now I want to see how persistent you're going to be in what you want from him. I've heard people say when you pray, God ain't hard of hearing. He heard you. Why you keep praying for the same thing over and over again? Next time somebody tell them tell you something like that, you tell them to their faith. That's why you ain't got nothing. That's why you don't have what you have because you don't know how to keep asking God over and over and over again. You got to be like a broken record in the ear of God. Lord, you know you can do this for me. Now listen to what Jesus said about the unjust judge. He said, I'm going to have to give that woman what she wants because she weary me. In other words, some of y'all say, you get on my last nerve. You always aggravate me and agitate me. See, sometimes when you want something from the Lord, you got to be like that thing in the middle of a, of a, a washing machine. I hate to put it that way, but that's the only way I know how to explain to you. See, God knows what you need before you ask him. But he's waiting for you to ask him. And some folks don't want to ask him because they let pride get in the way. But you got to turn that pride into an agitation. Lord, I know you can give it to me. I'm going to praise you until you give it to me. I'm going to worship you until you give it to me. I'm going to shout until you give it to me. And the Bible said he gave this woman. He said, lest she weary me and trouble me. I'm going to avenge her. I'm going to give her what she wants. Right. Now, the unjust judge who's crooked to the core, come on somebody, who is getting away with a lot of stuff. If you know somebody ain't right, you want to get even with them, you get on their nerve. Oh, come on somebody. Oh, you don't want to hear, especially if you know they got something that belongs to you. Look at somebody and say, somebody got something that belongs to me. And God has all power. And I'm his private property. God's going to see to it that they give it to me. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. You know what I love about prayer? Man, I'd always pray because prayer works. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. Prayer works because it's worth more than anything. Yes. Anything yes. or anything else. Right. And it lasts longer. Uh -huh. 
Come on, somebody. And longer as it never ends. Why? Because prayer is always the power and the source of God's inheritance. You want something to belong to you that God got for you? Keep on praying about it. Don't faint, don't get weary and well doing. Don't get tired, don't give in, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel, don't run away, don't get mad, don't slam the door, don't go down bad, but keep the joy of the Lord in your heart. Keep peace in your heart. Give God the praise. Even when things are not going right, praise Him in the house. Even when you ain't got enough money, praise Him in the house. I'm here to tell you, God can open a window. When you think God ain't got it, that's when God can give it. God can let you walk up on a bag of money. Y'all, God can let you run your hand in an old pocket. God can help you out in the backyard digging. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all can be minding your own business and something will blow on your windshield. What are you trying to say, Pastor? All I'm trying to say is God can supply your needs. God can fulfill your desire. Don't get weary and tired and well doing. And don't get tired and praying for something that God has for you. These are some of the paradox of life. When you want something for God, you got to seek him out. Seek him while his face can be found. Seek him while it is yet day. Seek him while you have an opportunity to draw closer. Somebody say amen. You say, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that there was a man in the Bible in the Old Testament. And everybody in here heard about him one way or another. He was a Syrian general by the name of uh, Naaman. Amen. And he was a good general for the work that he done. Amen. And he directed all these men, but he had one defect in his character. He had leprosy. Yeah. Leprosy where no one uh, wanted to be around him. That's why you can be gifted and talented, but without repentance. You can have all kinds of gifts and talent, but if you don't use them for the glory of God, yeah. it ain't going to mean nothing in the end. You were born with that gift and you'll die with that gift. And whether you use it for God or not is left up to you. But Naaman uh, had captured uh, some of the Israelite people and brought them to captivity. And there was the king's wife who had a little old Israelite girl that knew that there was a prophet in Israel by the name of Elosh. And one day, uh, the wife and Naaman was talking, and, and he was probably saying something in the, in the ballpark, uh, I wish I could be clean of all this leprosy. And somehow the maid heard about it and inquired of the wife, there is a God in Israel. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. There's a God in Roxbury that can heal your sin sick soul. There's a God in Dorchester, in Maribay, in Massachusetts. There's a God in Israel, and there's a God in Africa that can heal your soul. Okay, now y'all with me. And they began to inquire, who is this God? The Bible said the king got silver and gold and Babylonian garment and all precious things, put them on a mute and sent them all the way up to Israel. Said, Naaman, go get your healing. Look at somebody and say, go get your healing. Look at somebody else and say, I claim my healing in Jesus' name. Now, some folks just think healing of the body, but I'm talking about healing of your finances. I'm talking about healing of your mind. I'm talking about healing of your body. I'm talking about healing of your soul. I'm talking about healing of your family. I'm talking about healing of your relationship. I'm talking about healing of your husband. Healing of your children. Healing of your wife. So Naaman went up with his chariots. He's got the silver and the gold. He got the garments. They're going up to Eli's house. And Eli's probably was in there having breakfast. 
enjoying his morning and somebody come knocking at the door. Horses all outside. Come on, somebody. We're still private property. I don't care where you at. You're private property. And then this man, Gehazi, answered the door. And there stood this man, this great general of Syria, came down to get a healing. And then he heard, Elosh heard that this man was coming down. And the king who heard they were coming down thought that Syria was coming to attack again. And the Bible said he rented his clothes and said he come to start nothing but trouble. Sometimes folks that are in the world don't always come to start trouble. They come for your help. And you might be the very vessel that God used to draw them closer. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't know when God is going to use you to touch somebody else. Amen. Don't think that everybody that's in the world don't want to receive Christ. There's some people that's going to come to you. Just like Naaman came uh, down to uh, this man's house and knocked on his door. And instead of Elosh coming out, Elosh told Gehazi, tell him to go and bathe in the Jordan River. In other words, go jump in the river. Now that don't sound right. Because when somebody comes to get something for you and you tell them something strange, come on somebody, the Bible said that Naaman got so mad that he was ready to do some harm and go back down to Syria. But thank God that somebody is thinking in the crowd. Listen, somebody say, you ought to always be thinking. Where I'm from, they say, throw another log on the fire. You got to do some thinking, some critical, analytical thinking. What they're better known as catting. You ever seen a cat when he sit on a windowsill? He look like he always thinking, don't he? What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm saying he might not be thinking about no rat sandwich or anything like that. He's just on the windowsill. He just look like he's thinking all the time. And so somebody drew the conclusion and look like he's thinking, so he's catting. He's critical, analytical thinking. Somebody looks at him and says, I see what you mean. This man got mad and he wanted to, he wanted to do some harm, but God would not allow that to happen. And so one of his servants says to him, uh, uh, Master, he, you came all this way. He told you to go bathe in the Jordan River seven times. And Naaman said, we got two better rivers in Syria better than Jordan. Come on, somebody. See, that's the problem with a lot of folks today. They walk by sight and not by faith. When God said do something according to his word, all you got to do is be obedient. And God will bring it to pass. See, what he thought was right for him wasn't what, what God wanted. So his servant said, won't you go on down and take a bath down there? The Bible said he went down, probably after about the first, the second, third, fourth dip. He didn't see much of a change. Around the sixth dip, he started seeing the leprosy. Just like dirt wash off his body. And the Bible said when he dipped the seventh time and came up out of the water, the Bible said his skin was like newborn child's flesh. Like a newborn baby's flesh. And ain't nothing more pure and smooth and silky and feel so good and smell so good and look so good than a newborn child's birth. Baby's flesh. Somebody say amen. Amen. The Bible said he got so happy he came back. Now he happy. It's amazing how God people look like sour pussies all day long. Come on, somebody. I'm going to say it just like I mean it. Be mad at anything and everything. But God get me to bless you, but you got to be in alignment with God's word. And you don't have to wait for something good to be happy. You can be happy for no reason at all. All because you're a private prophet. All because you belong to the Lord. So what you sad about? What you mad about? 
What you green with envy? What you old with jealousy? Why are you walking around with a, a spiritual hangover? The Bible says he brought the gold and silver and the garment back to give to Elosh. And Elosh says, it's not, it's not the time for us to receive this money. You can't pay God to heal you. You got to receive it by faith. And so the man put the gold and the silver and the garment back on his chariot and we're heading back to Syria and he was happy. But he didn't leave with just the silver and the gold and the garment. He asked the, kid, he asked the prophet, you, you, do you mind if I take some of this rich soil, this holy soil? Do you mind if I take some of this and some bay back to Syria so I can worship your God on your holy soil? I don't think y'all understand it. Wherever God is, is the presence of God. And just like he told Moses, put off your shoe. Why? Because you're standing on You see, because in biblical time, they believed the God that you worship was on the soil that you was on. That's why they had hang-ups about where they worship and the ground they worship on. Don't y'all look at me like that. Some while y'all worship the ground, some folks walk on. I didn't come up with that. That's an old song. <laughs> Women, men worship the ground. Head over heel in love. You tell them about the Lord, they snap like a dime. <laughs> Leave me alone. They lost their mind. I know what I'm talking about. But you saw in love. But your first love should be Christ. Your first love should be your relationship with Christ. Don't wind up being like the church of Laodicea. As long as folks got going, things good, and they spoil, I mean they spoil rotten. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, because I was going to talk about preachers. Peaches and preachers. You ever had a butcher of peaches? We used to get a butcher, bushel of peaches. And my mama always used to say, pull them all out quick. Let's see if there's any rotten ones on the bar. There are two kinds of peaches. There's a clear seed and there's a press seed. You cook and can with the clear seed and you eat the press seed for meat. Look at somebody saying, hmm. So you didn't know you were going to get a sermon on preaching. And preachers and preachers. And I want you to understand something going back to the name. This man went with this soil from the earth. Because he was rich, because he wanted in a place where he, when he stepped on this soil, that he can worship the God of Israel for the healing of his soul. You see, it was just a point of contact, just like anointing oil. It's just a point of contact. Somebody say amen. amen. That oil that come from Israel was blessed. It was blessed by the priest, it was blessed by your pastor, and now it will be blessed by you. And wherever it's just a point of contact. And when you have a point of contact, it changes everything. The Bible says the man took on off and was on his way with his saw, the, the, the money and the gold and stuff he brought with him. And you see, it didn't leave Elijah broke because Elijah know where all his needs were met. Look at somebody and say, God will meet all your needs. Because you're his private property. Look at somebody that says, ain't God all right? I know he's all right because if he was all right with you, I know he's all right with me. Amen? So you might want to walk around and say, God is all right. He's all right with me. He's been all right with you. He's all right with me. God is all right, all right. God is all right, all right. And even day and night. Even day and night. I'll tell you that about it. Now I have to bring conclusion to this. 
Sometime when folks get blessed, there's always somebody want what you got. Did I say that right? When God started blessing, somebody said the devil started messing. God had blessed Naaman to go back to his country to be a testimony to the Syrian host. Because you can only imagine in the minds of the people, he didn't go on down there as white as snow, and yet he come back looking like a new man. I don't know about you, but I was born in sin, and I was shaped in iniquity. But when I got touched by the Lord, I became brand new. I looked at my head and my feet too, and God had touched me and brought me about a new life. Folks didn't even see me the same. Because I only look like a sinner. I smell like one. Come on, somebody. I had a sinner's walk. Oh, come on, somebody. See, y'all tired now. We, Pastor, you done had us in church a long time. If there's a righteous walk, there's got to be a sinner's walk. You can tell a sinner's walk. But I got something that will change that walk. My God. Give God a chance. This man, Gehazi, took off after these men when they were leaving. Because greed and jealousy and envy filled his heart. He just couldn't stand the fact that man was leaving all that silver and gold, all that property, all those things that he once could have had. But he got in trouble because he trespassed. When you're hanging around a lot and they're not doing anything, the devil will seduce you. Come on, somebody. You got to remind yourself I'm private property. Better known as PP. Come on, somebody. I'm private property. I belong to God and God belongs to me. Come on, somebody. Every time you go to the bathroom, you got to remind yourself I'm private property. Sometimes you got to bring it out like that, bro. I know I'm strange. But one day you're going to understand all this strange. He took this garment when, when, when he went up on the man of God who was clean. I mean, he was looking good. And ain't nothing wrong with a good looking husband or a good looking man. Wait a minute. I didn't hear no women say amen or nothing, bro. Getting my oil ready because this is for them. The man said, it's all is well. He said, all is well. But there are prophets from the school of prophets that come to visit my master and they need some garment and some gold and stuff. And the man jumped off the chariot, loaded his Gehazi down, and you can see him going back down to Eli's house. Eli's house. And when he got there, Eli said, where have you been? And he looked at the prophet, and that's why I know folks you look in a preacher's eye and lie yes. and tell them what they call a bald-faced lie. Right. That means they can look you right in the face and lie and not even blink. Y'all yes. don't want to hear that. I ain't hear too much shouting in. He says, didn't my spirit go with you when you left to go meet those men? And you see what happened, he trespassed the commandments of God. And when you trespass, you bring all kind of things on your life and the lives of those around you and your family. And the same way folks can be blessed, folks can be cursed. And they will try to pass that on to you if you're not careful. You gotta know who you stand for and what you stand for. And the Bible said that Eli said to Gehazi, his servant that was close to him, the same leprosy 
that were washed in the Jordan River will come upon your flesh. And not only your flesh, but your children's children to all generations. Look at somebody say, I'm private property. Ain't no disease, ain't no sickness, ain't no affliction, brokenness got to go, brokenness got to go, not having no money got to go, prosperity has to come. I speak it right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I don't know what you're waiting for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Holy oil from Israel. Thank you. Point of contact. You want to get in line? You want to bless it? Come on, come quickly. The time is far spent, and you ought to stand on your feet and give God the praise. Thank Amen, you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Somebody ought to praise him this morning. Somebody ought to praise him this morning. All right, this is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow here with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.